I'm Tracy with KOGMissions.com, and welcome to Simple Bible Truth. I hope to encourage you in your faith and to seek truth, to love God, and to obey Jesus. Do you feel compelled to give to your church or to a ministry by Holy Spirit and feel peace and joy when doing it? Or do you feel pressured to be a good Christian and to receive maybe a blessing for giving? But each time you drop your money into the plate or you write out a check, you feel burdened because you know that you have unmet bills or hungry children. Tithing is an age old topic that has held the church in bondage for many years. Many organizations falsely teach tithing in hope to convict their members into giving so that they can meet their financial needs. Shame on those churches or organizations for using a law given to Moses for their own gain as a Christian, which is most likely even prompted by fear that they won't get enough money for the month. But why not be honest and teach biblical giving and allow Holy Spirit to convict the believers as to who should give and what and how much, to whom and to what? and thus trust God to provide for his work. This is a very important topic that has led many unknowingly into sin and in turn causes unneeded stress in families and very often it harms marriages. We must focus on being faithful with the gifts that we have been given and not made to feel guilty or responsible for those gifts that we have not been given. The preachers of tithing use Malachi 3.10, but in context, it is only part of God's dissatisfaction with the Jews. There will be judgment for those who practice divination, who commit adultery, break promises, exploit workers, widows, and orphans. And in this way, when they do that, those people show that they do not fear God. But God will show them mercy, he says, because he made a promise. And that is the only reason why he hadn't killed them all yet. They ignored his commandments. He tells them to return to him and he will return to them. And we see that he did this over and over again throughout history. They then ask, but how should we return and how are we robbing you? God then brings another thing against them. He tells them that they are robbing him by not bringing in tithes and offerings. Why? The reason was they needed the tithes was so that the food may be in his temple for the priests because they didn't own land. And that is how they ate when they ministered to God and to the people at the temple. If they would tithe like the law required, he would then stop the plague that was going around on their crops. This was a specific question and a specific answer was given to that question. This was in addition to all the other things that they were doing wrong. And his punishment was specific to what they were doing wrong at the time. Their crops had a plague. And this was because they were not using what they were given as to how he told them to use it. Deuteronomy 26, 12 through 13 explains also that they tithed on their income in a third year. So this was not every month they were tithing. And that tithe every third year went to the Levites, the resident foreigner, widows, and orphans. Tithing was all a part of the other commandments that were in the law given to Moses. Matthew 23, 23, and in Luke, tithing is mentioned, but to the Pharisees because it says they are hypocrites. It was in reference to the law that they were claiming to follow. They neglected what was more important, though, which was justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Then he adds, Jesus, that they should do these things and not neglect the other. But that was to the Jewish leaders who were following the Mosaic law, which we are not under. And in fact, it says in Galatians that followers of Jesus are sinners if they are trying to follow the law given to Moses rather than the law given to Messiah. You can't follow both. Paul in Romans 12 talks about the gifts or graces given to those in the church. There are many different members and all do not serve the same function in the body. There are prophets, teachers, those who who have services that help serve in the church, those who give encouragement and those who contribute, which is just one of the gifts. Not everyone 
is gifted in contributing financially, just like teaching or prophesying. Not everyone is a prophet or a teacher. And then there's also leadership and a few others. Whatever our gifts are, we should use them and serve in that way as if we were serving unto the Lord, it says, which we are doing when we serve the body of Christ. The church in the New Testament is never told to tithe or follow any law that was given to Moses. Christians are told to recognize that all they have comes from the Lord and that they should give generously and cheerfully when they give. They are never told how much to give or when to give. In Acts, we see the early church had people who were wealthy and had more than they needed. So they sold their extra properties to help out so that nobody in the church lacked. Only those who had brought this money to share. The ones who could not pay their bills and provide for their family did not sacrifice the basic needs of their family in order to give money to the church or to the body of believers. This was not required of them. It is not honoring to God if you cannot provide for your family's basic needs and you are giving money then to the church. In fact, we are told in 1 Timothy 5, 8, if anyone does not provide for his own, especially those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Those are pretty harsh words. And we need to consider that in relation to tithing. If you have payments on expensive cars, boats, and cabins, and if you go out to eat every day and are always buying clothes and incurring unneeded debt, then yes, you should quit doing those things and sell those things. And then you would be able to have money to give. But if you are working hard and are having trouble paying your bills though, buying food, putting gas in the car and taking care of your children, God certainly would not give you the gift of giving. He would not burden you with that. You will be gifted in other ways to serve God's people and his work and give to the body of believers, even in ways that may be more valuable than money. We do not all have the same gifts. Jesus said his yoke is light. He came to free us from the law given to Moses, which was very heavy so heavy that it could not even be kept and it could not save. It was temporary to make people aware of their sin. The law given to Jesus brought freedom and life. We are foolish and even prideful if we refuse to acknowledge what Jesus did and taught just so that we feel good about ourselves. If one wishes to do or teach tithing, then they must teach and keep the whole law. Another misused verse to prompt a feeling that one must give, even if you don't have anything to give, is when Jesus taught about the widow who put in all that she had to live on into the offering. His teaching point was not that everyone should do that, but that we should have the heart that she had and trust God as she did. We can't possibly put all we have into the plate every time it comes around or the whole church would be out on the street and bankrupt. And what honor would that give to God and what would that show the world around and why would anybody then want to be a part of it? Also, the point there was focused on those giving more maybe, but not with the right motives and heart and probably they weren't even giving enough even though they were giving way more than the widow did. If you have a lot, no matter what it is, a lot is required of you. And this includes your finances. It is a much lighter burden to give as God provides and to give as Holy Spirit leads. All that we have is his and we must be good stewards with it. And just because you give money to a church does not make you a good steward with what has been given to you, as we read earlier, especially if the needs of your family are not met. We will all have to give an account as to how we used what was given to us, whether we have a little or a lot. I encourage you to bring this matter before the Lord. It is a very serious matter, especially for those leading the local church and those leading their families. Are you following what has now become a tradition and teaching taught by men? Or are you following the new covenant that the Messiah gave us? Seek truth on this matter, love God and obey Jesus.
and have a blessed day.